Right, so about to speak to now the lovely Daisy Fernandez, who is a writer and designer at Nerial and has been working on lots of different things, including Card Shark, uh, which is a great game I've been playing recently, and as well, Reigns Three Kingdoms, uh, which very interested to find out a bit more about that. Hello, Daisy. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me on. Uh, let's talk a little bit, if you, if you're right to, uh, about Card Shark first because it's it's a game I've played. I, I really enjoy playing it. Um, what did you? What was your involvement with the game? I initially came on to write the tutorials for the game, so it's it's a game that's constantly teaching you how to play all of the different mechanics. Um, so I was brought on to explain how to play the game before. I even knew how to play it. Right, <laughs> I, had, okay. I had this sort of interesting process of reverse engineering. Um, then it meant that I had to write quite a lot. Um, you know, I had to use the tone of the comps, um, who's the mental character. Yeah. Um, and I'd be writing lines on the fly, and then that expanded into more of an actual writing role. So I had this kind of hybrid design, writing, narrative design role. What was it like writing the tutorials? So for, for anyone that doesn't know, um, it, it's very much, it, it's a card game, but it's it's a, a game about cheating at cards. So um, there's quite a lot of intuitive things you have to learn. Uh, I mean, there's 28 different card tricks, isn't there? So, um, yeah. I, I mean, ha, what was it like writing <laughs> all of those? It was very interesting you know this this idea of reverse engineering um because i would say i'm not very um very good at logic games <laughs> so <laughs> being thrown in the deep end without anyone really being able to explain it apart from the programmers and then find a way to uh, translate that into something that a, a player will experience was interesting i think it was actually helpful in many ways because I had to look out for that eureka moment of understanding and be like okay this is the the core of the mini game yeah. I need to not lose sight of how it felt to not know how to play this because often you're playing it so much that you you've become used to it um, and then you lose an understanding of how to teach it to someone so it was kind of like a race against the clock yeah, which it is in the game as well, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Do, do you know much about cards? I mean, I guess you do now, but when you were starting this out, did you know much about it? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Um, which, again, I think was useful because it meant yeah. that I could cater for the, the least experienced player. And myself and Arno, the creative director, are both dyslexic. And we talked quite a lot about how that was a... It's a frustrating... Um, it's a frustrating... I don't know if you'd call it a condition, a condition to have, <laughs> but it's also very helpful when you're trying to teach someone because it means that you really have to strip it back to its most basic components um, in order to get an understanding of it in the first place. Um, so I, it, it is, you don't really make the same assum learning assumptions as someone who's a bit more capable of these kind of games sure. might make. Well, I would say, I mean, because they get co pretty complex, it, it's quite yes, <laughs> near the end. I was like, oh, my God, OK, I was writing things down. I mean, to like, remember stuff. But uh, w which is your favourite one that, that you wrote? Um, I think the the. the so basically, we started off writing these tutorials and they were relatively dry. And then when we were doing a second pass of them, it's when we got to inject a bit more comedy and dynamism mm. into the tutorials and it also it it also became like a kind of self-preservation thing because you know you're, you're writing these tutorials again and again and then you start getting it um a bit facetious or like a bit silly in how you write them so i remember when i was working on the the tutorial where you have the duplicate deck of cards yes it was so confusing writing that tutorial <laughs> that comedy crept in between me and Ben, the programmer working on that tutorial with me. And we came up with this, um, I, I was saying to myself when I was a, a kid, I would, if I was trying to revise, I might uh, pretend there was like an audience with my Beanie Babies or something. <laughs> um, so we were saying it would be really funny if the comp 
had this kind of um this conversation with him like he role plays the the scenario yes and yeah. do you remember that that pixar game uh mini uh that pixar short film at the, just before bugs life oh um, right yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's it called i know Mini's i know game what... yes yeah we it, that was a one, an early reference point when i was trying to explain the idea and then we just came up with we had this back and forth making it more and more ludicrous and then added in this part where the comp just you know the, the fantasy becomes kind of real like he sort of this is going to be really dry for someone who hasn't played the game. Before, but <laughs> the comp just kind of appears like he sort of defies space and time <laughs> in one bit. <laughs> and that was Ben's addition. Um, and he wrote some really funny lines in there as well. And he got a writing credit in the game, which is great because he added a lot of comedy to it. Um, so, yeah, I think that was my favorite tutorial to work on just because we came so loopy. We became so loopy that it ended up being funner than we thought it would be. And I guess I think that's quite important in the game because there is a lot to learn, but I, you do get that sort of uh, sense of fun throughout. And, and with the different characters as well, I don't know how much, uh, whether you mainly wrote the tutorials or if you uh, got to, to uh, sort of write any of the bits with the different people that he, he meets along the way, our character. Quite a few... Um um lines for like the win and lose conditions yes. in the in the main games so francois was the sort of engine of the writing that like he really did an absolutely phenomenal job constructing this very intricate plot and also providing the um the benchmark of writing for each individual character so it was relatively easy for me to come in later on in the project and um look at what he'd written and then continue in that tone because you know before it used to say lose line or win line yeah and then and then we also had a brilliant editor Siobhan come on and he also added some dialogue punch-ups and it was a really nice process because Francois had done such a good job of making this world in the first place I was going to say what's that like then when you're continuing someone else's work as a writer because I, I've never really thought of that but of course you know most games will have more than one writer uh, and so everyone's got to work together and, and, and keep that tone and, and what's that like and how, how do you get into doing that? I think if the character is well written it's a delight to yeah. pick up from where they left off um, so yeah like writing finding the comps narrative voice was really easy actually because he was such a um nicely constructed three-dimensional character who was on one hand very warm and nurturing and on the other hand a uh, exploiting narcissist yeah so we ha had i think one thing i quite wanted to bring into it when i was looking at what francois had written already was this idea of um him him turning and becoming like a bit nasty and like pushing yeah. for snubs and put downs and stuff like that um so the the emotional psychological richness was there already it's just um we could like there was a feeling that we could maybe progress it a bit and push it a bit further without making it too explicit um so that was a really that was a really nice process and then also with eugene the player character yeah he's a, a mute protagonist and that's a interesting yeah limitation to work with because it's such a video game convention um but i think that having the opportunity to write his journals meant that we could have this back and forth like establishing we sort of learned who he was yeah in tandem with writing the journal entries I guess was that was that the reason sort of for the journal so you could work out what he was thinking about things? Yeah, there were a few reasons. Like we wanted to give him a bit more emotional depth, um, and we also wanted to um, anchor the player in some way so they could have a reference point to remember who was who and where they'd been. And because it is at heart a mystery story, yeah, it's good for them to have someone passing the information at the same rate as them and maybe drawing connections which the player hasn't noticed yeah yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I do but, love the fact that obviously because the comp is teaching him uh English and, and spelling and things like that as he goes along his journals do get more articulate as well 
that was inspired actually by this book called Flowers for Algernon. Um, I don't know if you've read it. No, no. It's one of the saddest books I've ever read, oh. <laughs> read in my life. It's about a a man. It's a, it's a sci-fi novel written in, I'm going to get this wrong. I think it's written in the 70s or 80s. Um, and it's about a man who has a very uh, low IQ. And it's written in his, uh, written in first person. And his, his writing's riddled with typos. And it's just, you know, a grammatical mess. And then he's... He goes through a medical procedure, which means his IQ grows. Um, so you see his writing become more and more intelligent until it becomes just um, almost incomprehensible. Oh, and it's wow. kind of about his emotional journey through, um, you know, his increasing intelligence. And we wanted to do something similar in the journal and just see that Eugene becomes more... Uh, intellectual but at what cost you know he yeah. becomes distanced from where he came from but he doesn't quite fit in um in the world that he's joining yeah that's really interesting yeah and I'll, I'll definitely read that book I mean it does sound very sad but <laughs> uh, it sounds good as well <laughs> it's absolutely amazing I couldn't recommend it more oh I'll check it out I do like sci-fi um let's talk a little bit as well about um some of the other stuff you you've been working on um or have worked on uh, i was interested in south of the circle uh, mm. because i think i'm going to play a demo of that in 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 shortly i don't know exactly when but um so tell me a little bit more about that game and what that's about actually the first professional game i worked on oh amazing um, yeah so it will always have a special place in my heart um and it's a narrative adventure game. It's more, I think it might even be called an interactive story Yeah. Um, for Apple Arcade. And it follows the story of a, of a man who's in a plane crash in the Antarctic um, during the Cold War period, looking back at the events that led to him where he is now yeah. in a plane crash in the Antarctic. And it's... My initial job when I joined that project was to work with the cameras and the landscape sculpting. But then this is a bit of a recurring theme, actually. <laughs> I get hired for one thing and then end up uh, encroaching <laughs> in a different department. But I ended up working on the, um, the dialogue system in that game. And basically, it's a sort of lightly branching script, but okay. we wanted the dialogue choices to be visually represented via 2D animation so that you you kind of make an impulsive emotional decision and choose an option based on an animating a bit of animating UI as opposed to reading what the answer you know reading text yeah yeah that's very I, I was gonna say actually it, it, you know because obviously I interest, introduced you as writer and designer but obviously they're quite different uh jobs so so I mean, which would you see yourself as? Do you do you come on to these things as, as a designer and 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 then and then end up <laughs> also writing things, or how, how does it work? I um, I it's funny because I always thought that I would come into the games industry as a writer, um, because I did an English degree. Yeah. But then when I applied for writing jobs after my English degree, I just faced rejection after rejection oh. because it's not. It was hubris on my part because I thought, oh, I've got an English degree. Like anyone's <laughs> going to be lucky to have me. <laughs> and just disregarding the immense, um, you know, amount of like it, it's it's not as simple as just writing. It's you need to understand how um, you need to have a basic understanding of logic. Mm. You need to understand um, branching story structure or this limitations in game like video games and how expensive everything is so I then did a, a master's in games design and development and when I came out of that found that I had a real yearning to work with design in games and then once I was working as a designer in narrative video games it sort of felt like a natural progression to occasionally dip my toes into writing yeah. and bring that bring that in because it's especially in an indie studio where you can work on several things uh you're not a siloed as in a bigger studio would you still like to to go more into writing or, or are you happy kind of doing a bit of both I, I really love doing 
both because I think my for me the 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 sort of storytelling I love the most in video games is when the mechanics tell the story yeah um you know and the the dialogue is is hugely important and can make or break the game as well but in the case of card shark I really enjoyed how the actual gameplay progresses the story and the dialogue is sort of what you unlock as a as a a lure to keep you going through the story and I think I agree I think that is what makes you know great games when it's not someone sitting down with a block of text saying and this this and this and this and you you just pick up different things as you play the game and I think that's what video games could really bring to storytelling as opposed to you know a film or something like that um what was I going to say? Um, I, I, I'm interested as well in Reigns Three Kingdoms, of course, uh, because that's again you you see you get to work on some very interesting stories and um, and and different like completely different sort of histories and mm. um, things like that. I mean, I suppose I I, sh- I will ask first how how do you get into working into such completely different um, games? Do do you find yourself do you, do you do a lot of research or how do you sort of like get to know what's going on with each each game so to, to clarify um how do i how do i immerse myself in the world yeah. of that game yeah, yeah, yeah. as part yeah. of the research stage yes yeah, yeah. Uh, it depends really with um in the case of reigns i got sent the tomes oh wow or, okay. i got sent the three kingdom tones the tomes to my flat and That's I was amazing. also instructed to watch an amazing <laughs> animated So this is the YouTube channel. We should say it's obviously it's it's inspired by this Chinese epic, the the Romance mm. of Three Kingdoms, isn't it? Yeah, which um, is my understanding is that it's basically the the Iliad of China. Right. Um, and it's yeah, it's it's a pretty formidable <laughs> looking set of books. <laughs> it's not just one book; it's several. Oh my goodness. Um, but then, yeah, I was also recommended this YouTube channel, which everyone else on the team was a big fan of, which has these nice 2D animations and um, voiceover explaining all of the complex um, events that happen over the course of the books. Um, and so that was kind of my like primer. And then I started reading the books mm. and it's that I read the translation by Robert Moss, which is really nice. I studied classical civilization at school, which I think is a discontinued A level because it's not <laughs> useful enough. But I think that was a good. Uh, I think yeah, having read those, you know, this having read like the Aeneid and the Odyssey and stuff like that, stood me in good stead for going on to these bigger texts because it, it's at least maybe this is just how I was taught it. But you sometimes these books can come across a bit dry, but then you can kind of project a modern psychological reading onto them um which makes them more accessible as you're reading them yeah yeah and I'm guessing that's kind of what's going to happen with the game and that's sort of what's what they've done with previous things I I I mean it's it does sound amazing I'm I'm really interested in in um finding out a little bit more about it and um like you said condensing all of that into a game must must be quite difficult (laughs) It was a, it's a lot of material and it is actually a very big game that we've created. Um, yeah. So it was hugely useful having Yoyu, who's the, the main writer and um, the person who pitched the game in the first place. Oh, great. Uh, okay. On the team. Yeah. Um, because she was the resident expert. So you can ask her questions and um, she would point out mistakes that had been made in the writing process and stuff like that. Um, and it's also just helpful having someone, yeah, like, again, maybe know what's important to keep in the game versus what can be omitted, which right. isn't going to bite you in the ass yeah. later on. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, um, in terms of what your work work on it at the moment, what, what kind of stuff are you, as much as you're able to say, obviously, but um, what, what kind of things are you, is it mainly design or are you, again, dipping your toe into, <laughs> into writing as well? It's, yeah, it's a hybrid situation again so I've, I've written a lot of um if, if anyone's familiar with the reigns franchise you have these hundreds of one-off interactions where someone yeah. comes to you with a question and then you can have a sort of binary response to them so I've written 
hundreds of cards um, <laughs> in that universe. Um, then I've also worked in the narrative design side of it, but it's I'm just trying to remember what's actually been publicly announced and what yes, hasn't. Of course. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to tread carefully. <laughs> no, not at all. I think it's just there's um, the yeah. I've I've worked on the narrative design as well, but <laughs> and we'll I can't leave really it talk there. Too much <laughs> That's cool. No, I'm I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, it just sounds. I think it's such an interesting uh, move. Um, I, like you said, obviously that Reigns is quite a well-known series, and that there's been different sort of dimensions of this but to sort of ha have it based in China and based already around these novels I think is such a kind of interesting move um for for the company um and yeah I I'm I'm really looking forward to that one um I guess I'd be interested to know I'm sure people like yourself um have uh, had an English degree and then wanted to become a writer and I, I was interested in you saying oh and then I did this course and um, and that really helped me. I, I guess tips for people who want to get into writing for games, because it just sounds like such an amazing job, but yeah, a bit trickier than some people imagine, <laughs> I'm guessing. I think it's it's not so much tricky as it just requires a a new part of your brain to be used, and it's important to be informed about that. Um, I for me at least, learning very primitive programming, I can't emphasize enough how primitive it is, <laughs> uh, was helpful because it helps you understand, um, it, it kind of gives you the constraints to tell stories and constraints are really useful in design uh, and they can be really creative starting points. So this master's course I did was a, um, a sort of holistic look at design and development. It taught us all elements of making a video game, yeah. like animation, 3D art, wow. programming, design, writing. Like it was, it was absolutely amazing. It's the masters at the National Film and Television School. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so for me, that was actually um, a really brilliant thing to do, but it's also an expensive. Um, yeah, it's an expensive option. There's plenty of online tutorials which can um, teach you specifically about narrative design um, and writing for games. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's like the only yeah. option. Um, but I think that having, I would I think there's always the temptation to like disavow the, the English degree as like, oh, I should have gone into games earlier. But I'm actually really glad I did go into it because it did give me a, a solid um, reference point that isn't just video games yeah when i'm making video games and you know for example flowers for algernon was um granted i did read that after i did an english degree <laughs> <laughs> but i'm constantly looking back at literature for inspiration when i'm working on games and you know um great expectations was something i studied in my english degree and that's that that idea of a young character who's elevated and then becomes alienated by that um, social journey, which is what we drew on quite a lot for in Card Shark. So yeah. having having an interest in literature and things that seem quite far removed from video games is a really useful skill to have when making games. Is there a book that you've read that, that you think should be turned into a video game? Hmm. Interesting. I... Off the top of my head, I really love the nonfiction book called Love's Executioner, Ooh, okay. which is a uh, a book. It's a a series of case studies that a therapist wrote um, about clients suffering from death anxiety, ultimately, wow. and he looks a lot into their dreams and analysis of their dreams and uh, how he can use those to heal their various dysfunctions. And the dreams are like a really rich, creative, uh, like visually they're really amazing and um, profound. And myself and a few friends are working on a game that's inspired partially by this book. So yeah, I guess my slightly rambly answer is that <laughs> I these kind of non-fiction books can also be a really nice start point for making games because they'll 
they won't kind of make you claustrophobic with um, story structure, but they yeah. might provide you with some sort of emotional truth to start from. Would you ever like to, I don't know if you're saying you're making a game yourself there. I mean, it, uh, it, mm. I was going to say, would you ever like to make a game? Because obviously you've got the writing experience and the design. And obviously those are two pretty important <laughs> parts of a game. Would you ever want to make your own or are you making your own? We're making this game in our spare time. And that's been a really meaningful um, and challenging process. Yeah. So, yeah, ultimately, one day I would love to release that. Oh well, let, yeah, definitely let me know because that sounds really interesting. If that's the, if that's yeah. what you're working on, that sounds really cool. Yeah, um, the, the, the book's called Love's Executioner by Irvine Yalom. Okay, I'll check. I'll check out. Yeah, very. And I, I think that is. I, are you kind of going around now when when you're reading things, being like, huh, sort of like just just filing away ideas <laughs> whenever you read stuff. I think so. It's that's without sound I mean this sounds a bit pretentious but <laughs> I think one thing that I really love about making video games is that they it is a young medium there's so many stories that haven't been told and it really opened my eyes to design which is such a playful experimental process and so as you're saying you'll you'll read something and be like yeah this this could be an interesting mechanic and then I'm sure anyone who is listening to this who makes games is used to people saying well, you can make a video game out of that, <laughs> about <laughs> anything, but it, it, it is true. Uh, is there a game out there that you would have liked to have worked on, uh, either through design or writing? I'm sure there is, but... <laughs> There's so many. I yeah. think um, a non-wordy one would be inside uh, yeah. the, the Play Dead game, just because I love how efficiently and... Um, it's just such an efficient but abstract but somehow emotional game. Uh, and then my wordier choice would be Disco Elysium because oh. it's just, it's so daring and um, it's so dark. It really goes places which I feel like um, I had, yeah, was shocked to see a video game. I was just shocked to see a video game go some of the places it did and it was just really refreshing and interesting. Yeah, totally agree. It's it's great. It's it's amazing. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to see what they're gonna get up to next as well. Um, yeah. Uh, I I think I'm just trying to see. Yeah. Um, spoken about uh Three Kingdoms as well. Um, are you playing any games yourself at the moment? Um, do you have time to to play any stuff? And and what are you playing? I'm playing The Last of Us 2. Oh, moment. okay. <laughs> way behind everyone else. This always <laughs> happens, but I just, it's its kind of good in a way because it means that I stay off Twitter if I see everyone's talking about a game and I don't want to see spoilers. Um, and then I felt like the discourse around The Last of Us 2 was so, it looked so depressing yeah. that I disengaged from it all. Um, <laughs> and I, just, I feel so dated being like, Wow, The Last of Us 2 is really good. You guys. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, won everything. Um, but it's, it is really, um, it's really beautifully written. And it, I, I love all the attention to detail in the, um, the animations. Like, I'll just sometimes follow NPCs around. <laughs> I think I would be the worst Let's Play streamer ever because I'm incredibly boring when I play these kind of games because I, I just like spot it you know I like just seeing the attention that the detail that's gone into them I guess that makes sense also... uh, as a you know as someone who makes these games that's interesting I've never really thought of it like as people who make games do they play games differently but um I guess that would make sense because you just you're, you're more interested in the, the the game itself perhaps than well it's still interested in the story but yeah <laughs> and then in terms of the story I mean it's uh without spoilers it's I'm, I really appreciate how the game has so swiftly put me in the same vengeful headspace as yeah. Ellie, the protagonist, and it's it's fueling my, it's making me do horrible things <laughs> because I feel so vengeful, which is exactly what's happening with the player character, and I, I find that kind of, um, what's the word, that kind of para emotional parallel really effective and unique to video games. Yeah, totally. Again, like you said, it, it's something that you can only really uh, experience uh, as a player. Um, mm. 
Well, I mean, I really appreciate you coming on. It, it's really sort of fascinating to hear those different kind of angles. Um, and I think, yeah, it's just, it's so interesting to, to learn about how you can be both a, sort of a writer and a designer. And it makes sense, like you say, for these indie, in more sort of smaller games where you, you just get to sort of throw your hat in the ring and, and get involved with all these different kind of concepts. Um, is there? Is it mainly Reigns Three Kingdoms you're working on now, or is there anything else that's that's? It sounds like you maybe got quite a few things on the go with your your own game as well. <laughs> yeah, well, so Nuriel, which is the studio yeah. I work at, has always has several spinning plates. So I am working on um, one other game that hasn't been announced yet. Okay, but it's it's very it's great. It's really exciting. I'm really looking forward to that being announced. Um, but yeah, other than that, and my personal project, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> So you've got quite a few things going on. Oh, that's brilliant. And if people want to, I guess, find out more about any of these things, I'm guessing just, just check out Nerial. Is that is that the mm. best way to find out stuff? That's it. Cool. Uh, well, thank you again for for coming on. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to Reigns Three Kingdoms. And uh, yeah, good good job on, on Card Shark as well. It's, it's a great game. Thank you. 